Good morning and welcome to Morning Prayer on Thursday, April the 2nd. My name is Alex Banfield Hicks and I am the Director of Youth and College Ministries here at Church of the Ascension. And leading with me today is my esteemed colleague, who I will encourage to introduce herself. Hi, my name is Leah Hornfeck. I am CCO staff at University of Pittsburgh and Carnegie Mellon University with Church of the Ascension. Great. Um, I'm going to share the screen and we're going to go through morning prayer. Right, so let's have a moment of silence as we gather ourselves and acknowledge God's presence with us. Let us humbly confess our sins to Almighty God. Almighty and most merciful Father, we have erred and strayed from your ways like lost sheep. We have followed too much the devices and desires of our own hearts. We have offended against your holy laws. We have left undone those things which we ought to have done, and we have done those things which we ought not to have done. And apart from your grace, there is no health in us. O Lord, have mercy upon us. Spare all those who confess their faults. Restore all those who are penitent according to your promises declared to all people in Christ Jesus our Lord. And grant, O most merciful Father, for his sake, that we may now live a godly, righteous, and sober life to the glory of your holy name. Amen. Grant to your faithful people, merciful Lord, pardon and peace that we may be cleansed from all our sins and serve you with a quiet mind through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. O Lord, open our lips. And our mouths shall proclaim your praise. O God, make speed to save us. O Lord, make haste to help us. Glory be to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. Praise the Lord. The Lord's name be praised. The Lord is full of compassion and mercy. O come, let us adore him. O come, let us sing unto the Lord. Let us heartily rejoice in the strength of our salvation. Let us come before his presence with thanksgiving and show ourselves glad in him with psalms. For the Lord is a great God and a great King above all gods. In his hand are all the depths of the earth and the heights of the hills are his also. The sea is his for he made it and his hands prepared the dry land. O come, let us worship and fall down and kneel before the Lord our maker. For he is our God and we are the people of his pasture and the sheep of his hand. Today, if you will hear his voice, harden not your hearts as in the provocation, and as in the day of temptation in the wilderness, when your fathers tested me and put me to the proof, though they had seen my works. Forty years long I was grieved with this generation and said, it is a people that err in their hearts, for they have not known my ways, of whom I swore in my wrath that they should not enter into my rest. The Lord is full of compassion and mercy. O oh, come, let us adore him. We'll read responsively the first 18 verses of Psalm 78. Hear my teaching, O my people. Incline your ear to the words of my mouth. I will open my mouth in a parable. I will utter dark sayings of old. Which we have heard and known and such as our forefathers have told us. That we should not hide them from the children of the generations to come, but show the honor of the Lord, his mighty and wonderful works that he has done. He made a covenant with Jacob and gave Israel a law, which he commanded our forefathers to teach their children, that their posterity might know it, and the children which were yet unborn, with the intent that when they came up, they might show it to their children. That they might put their trust in God. And not forget the works of God, but keep his commandments. And not be as their forefathers, a faithless and stubborn generation. 
a generation that did not set their heart aright and whose spirit did not cleave steadfastly to God. Like the children of Ephraim, archers carrying bows. Who turned back in the day of battle. They did not keep the covenant of God. And would not walk in his law. But forgot what he had done. And the wonderful works that he had shown them. Marvelous things he did in the sight of our forefathers. In the land of Egypt, even in the field of Zone. He divided the sea and let them go through. He made the waters to stand in a heap. In the daytime, he led them with a cloud. And all the night through with a light of fire. He split the hard rocks in the wilderness. And gave them drink in abundance as out of the great deep. He brought waters out of the stony rock. So that it gushed out like the rivers. Yet for all this they sinned more against him. And provoked the Most High in the wilderness. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. A reading from Proverbs, beginning with the 31st chapter, the first verse. The words of King Lemuel, an oracle that his mother taught him. What are you doing, my son? What are you doing, son of my womb? What are you doing, son of my bowels? Do not give your strength to women, your ways to those who destroy kings. It is not for kings, O Lemuel. It is not for kings to drink wine or for rulers to take strong drink, lest they drink and forget what has been decreed and pervert the rights of all the afflicted. Give strong drink to the one who is perishing and wine to those in bitter distress. Let them drink and forget their poverty and remember their misery no more. Open your mouth for the mute, for the rights of all who are destitute. Open your mouth, judge righteously, defend the rights of the poor and needy. An excellent wife who can find, she is far more precious than jewels. The heart of her husband trusts in her and he will have no lack of gain. She does him good and not harm all the days of her life. She seeks wool and flax and works willingly with hands. She is like the ships of the merchant. She brings life, she brings her food from afar. She rises while it is yet night and provides food for her household and portions for her maidens. She considers a field and buys it. With the fruit of her hand, she plants a vineyard. She dresses herself with strength and makes her arms strong. She perceives that her merchandise is profitable. Her lamp does not go out at night. She puts her hands to the distaff and her hands hold the spindle. She opens her hand to the poor and she reaches out her hand to the needy. She is not afraid of snow for her household, for all her household are clothed in scarlet. She makes bed coverings for herself and her clothing is fine linen and purple. Her husband is known in the gates when he sits among the elders of the land. She makes linen garments and sells them. She delivers sashes to the merchant. Strength and dignity are her clothing and she laughs at the time to come. She opens her mouth with wisdom and the teaching of kindness is on her tongue. She looks well to the way of her household and does not eat the bread of idleness. Her children rise up and call her blessed, her husband also, and he praises her. Many women have done excellently, but you surpass them all. Charm is deceitful and beauty is vain, but a woman who fears the Lord is to be praised. Give her of the fruit of her hands and let her works praise her in the gates. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. We're going to jump to the second lesson, a reading from St. Paul's first epistle to St. Timothy, beginning with the fifth chapter, the first verse. Do not rebuke an older man, but encourage him as you would a father, younger men as brothers, older women as mothers, young women as sisters, all in purity. Honor widows who are truly widows, 
But if a widow has children or grandchildren, let them first learn to show godliness to their own household and to make some return to their parents, for this is pleasing in the sight of God. She who is truly a widow, left all alone, has set her hope on God and continues in supplications and prayers night and day. But she who is self-indulgent is dead even while she lives. Command these things as well, so they may be without reproach. But if anyone does not provide for his relatives, and especially for members of his household, he has denied the faith and is worse than an unbeliever. Let a widow be enrolled if she is not less than 60 years of age, having been the wife of one husband and having a reputation for good works. If she has brought up children, has shown hospitality, has washed the feet of the saints, has cared for the afflicted and has devoted herself to every good work. But refuse to enroll younger widows, for when their passions draw them away from Christ, they desire to marry and so incur condemnation for having abandoned their former faith. Besides that, they learn to be idlers, going about from house to house, and not only idlers, but also gossips and busybodies, saying what they should not. So I would have younger widows marry, bear children, manage their households, and give the adversary no occasion for slander, for some have already strayed after Satan. If any believing, women, if any believing woman has relatives who are widows, let her care for them. Let the church not be burdened so that it may care for those who are truly widows. <clears throat> Let the elders who rule well be considered worthy of double honor, especially those who labor in preaching and teaching. For the scripture says, you shall not muzzle an ox when it treads out the grain and the laborer deserves his wages. Do not admit a charge against an elder except on the evidence of two or three witnesses. As for those who persist in sin, rebuke them in the presence of all, so that the rest may stand in fear. In the presence of God and of Christ Jesus and of the elect angels, I charge you to keep these rules without prejudging, doing nothing from partiality. Do not be hasty in the laying of hands, nor take part in the sins of others. Keep yourself pure. No longer drink only water, but use a little wine for the sake of your stomach and your frequent ailments. The sins of some people are conspicuous, going before them to judgment, but the sins of others appear later. So also good works are conspicuous, and even those that are not cannot remain hidden. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. O ruler of the universe, Lord God, great deeds are they that you have done, surpassing human understanding. Your ways are ways of righteousness and truth. O King of all the ages, who can fail to do you homage, Lord, and sing the praises of your name? For you only are the Holy One. All nations will draw near and fall down before you because your just and holy works have been revealed. Glory be to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. Amen. Well, in the uh, little period of time I've been given um, to reflect upon these scriptures, I'd like us to return um, to Proverbs 31. So I'm just going to skip up, up, up. Don't get dizzy. And here we are. And as much as it'd be tempting to offer thoughts about the various medicinal uses of wine in the scriptures, uh, or the readings for today, um, I'd like to just focus on these first nine verses of Proverbs 31. Not just because I happen to have been given the assignment of translating them from Hebrew while at seminary uh, years ago, um, but I just love the image of this queen mother, and imagine maybe like a late teenage son who's just been um, crowned king and is um, giddy with all the power and opportunities that that um, position now holds. Um, and the mother gets his attention, verse two, what are you doing, my son? What are you doing, son of my womb? What are you doing, son of my vow? So the queen mother kind of puts him in his place, reminds him of where he's from. But most importantly, the following verses are all about helping him um, focus on what's important and use the resources available wisely. And I just feel that in this time in which all our schedules are changed and um, life is kind of 
turned upside down, I think it's really helpful for us to pause and pray and ask, well, what should our focus be? And what would be a good use of the resources and opportunities available to us? So in verses three through nine, um, you can see a, a chiastic structure evidence. So that's an A, B, B, A. Um, and as I see it, verse A, sorry, verse three, in verse A describes the wrong, the wrong focus of a king. Um, then B is verses four and five presenting the wrong use of wine. And then that switches in verses six to seven for the like B2, which is the right use of wine. And then finally back to A, A2, the right focus of a king. So you have the wrong focus of a king, the wrong use of wine, the right use of wine, and the right focus of a king. So in verse three, the wrong focus of a king. So suddenly here is, you can imagine this teenage son crowned and on the throne and suddenly very attractive and lots of um, opportunities um, with women. And um, the Hebrew translated strength is kind of like sexual virility. Um, but the mother says, do not give your strength to women, your ways to those who destroy kings. So she sees what his focus is and like names it. And we'll come back later to what his real focus should be. So you start off with the wrong focus of a king, which is on women. There's immediate opportunities for pleasure and the benefits of his position. And from that, the transition verse four is the wrong use of wine. So it's not for kings to drink wine, for rulers to take strong wink, lest they drink and forget what has been decreed and pervert the rights of all the afflicted which is a little foreshadowing of what his responsibility and focus should be later. So in terms of, is he using the opportunities and resources available to actually then um, not take responsibility for um, his particular role in this world? So not, so the wrong focus of a king is on women. The wrong use of wine is just to step away from responsibilities. Um, and then switching from verse uh, six, the right use of wine, um, so you have this, um, give strong drink to the one who is perishing and wine to those in bitter distress. Reminds me a little bit of the sort of use of uh, kind of painkillers and anesthetics for those who are really, really um, suffering. But there's also verse seven, let them drink and forget their poverty and remember their misery no more, which is an interesting thing. Don't really know what to say about that. Um, but certainly this is now using wine more um, appropriately in this kind of royal context. But then most importantly, the right focus of a king we see in verses eight and nine. Open your mouth for the mute, for the rights of all who are destitute. Open your mouth, judge righteously, defend the rights of the poor and needy. So now this king, this young teenage king, his voice has so much power and authority and he's meant to open it for the mute, for those who can't speak for themselves for the rights of all who are destitute, um, for the poor and needy. So it's interesting. There was the wrong focus, the wrong use of wine, the right use of wine, and the right focus. And it's just, I'd encourage us to think and pray about what are the resources that we have and how might we be using them rightly or wrongly? Um, and what should our focus be? Um, what could our voice actually achieve? You think primarily in terms of praying as we're separated from each other, but perhaps in terms of online um, representation, um, writing letters, what are some of the ways we, um, I mean, all people are sons of Adam, daughters of Eve. We have this sort of humble, royal identity as God's image bearers. How might our voices actually in this time be really powerful um, for the destitute, the poor and the needy? And I'm also reminded that at Ascension, we have this congregational care hub which is a link you can find on our website, I think in the news and events section, which is both for those who are in need to sort of share that with the church community or through um, sort of church leadership, or for those who have resources and opportunities to share those too. That might be one way we can use the resources that we have for those who are really struggling. So um, yeah, I'm very thankful for the, the King's mother with her words of challenge. Um, and we, I think, are forced to pray what should be our right focus at this time and ask God for leading in that and what might be the right use of the resources available to us. There end the lesson. I'm going to scroll back down and Leah will lead us in the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, 
the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Let us pray. Lord, have mercy upon us. Christ, have mercy upon us. Lord, have mercy upon us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. The Lord show your mercy upon us. And grant us your salvation. And our Lord, guide those who govern us. And lead us in the way of justice and truth. Clothe your ministers with righteousness. And let your people sing with joy. O oh Lord, save your people. And bless your inheritance. Give peace in our time, O oh Lord. And defend us by your mighty power. Let not the needy, O oh Lord, be forgotten. Nor the hope of the poor be taken away. Create in us clean hearts, O oh God. And take not your Holy Spirit from us. Almighty God, you alone can bring into order the unruly wills and affections of sinners. Grant your people grace to love what you command and desire what you promise, that among the swift and varied changes of this world, our hearts may surely there be fixed where true joys are to be found. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. O oh God, our Heavenly Father, you raise up your faithful servant, Henry Budd, to be a pastor in your church and to feed your flock. Give abundantly to all pastors the gifts of your Holy Spirit, that they may minister in your household as true servants of Christ and stewards of your divine mysteries. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Heavenly Father, in you we live and move and have our being. We humbly pray you so to guide and govern us by your Holy Spirit that in all the cares and occupations of our life, we may not forget you, but remember that we are ever walking in your sight. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Almighty and everlasting God, who alone works great marvels, send down upon your clergy and the congregations committed to their charge, the life-giving spirit of your grace, shower them with the continual dew of your blessing and ignite in them a zealous love of your gospel through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Lord, as we are facing the COVID-19 pandemic. Let us remember the destitute, the needy and the poor. May we who are merely inconvenienced remember those whose lives are at stake. May we who have no risk factors remember those most vulnerable. May we who have the luxury of working from home remember those who must choose between preserving their own health or making their rent. May we who have the flexibility to care for our children when their schools close, remember those who have no options. May we who have to cancel our trips, remember those who have no safe place to go. May we who are losing our margin money 
in the turbulent of the economic market, remember those who have no margin at all. May we who settle in for a quarantine at home, remember those who have no home. As fear grips our country, let us choose love. During this time when we cannot physically wrap our arms around each other, let us yet find ways to be the loving embrace of God, of you, to our neighbors. In your holy and precious name I pray. Amen. Amen. Almighty God, Father of all mercies, we, your unworthy servants, give you humble thanks for all your goodness and loving kindness to us and to all whom you have made. We bless you for our creation, preservation, and all the blessings of this life, but above all for your immeasurable love and the redemption of the world by our Lord Jesus Christ, for the means of grace and for the hope of glory. And we pray, give us such an awareness of your mercies that with truly thankful hearts, we may show forth your praise, not only with our lips, but in our lives, by giving up ourselves to your service and by walking before you in holiness and righteousness all our days. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, to him with you and the Holy Spirit, be honor and glory throughout all ages. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. May the God of hope fill us with all joy and peace in believing through the power of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Well, thank you for joining us. Goodbye from me. Bye.